Let's take a look at the Infuse app on the Apple TV and for the overall Apple ecosystem altogether. So I want to treat this first video as kind of a general introduction to Infuse. What is it? We'll take a look at some aspects of how it works and I intend to follow this up with more content coming with technical details, deeper dives into settings. I think Infuse is a lesser known app in the local media, local streaming, physical media ripping space compared to things like Kodi and Plex. But for Apple users, I think it's really up there, maybe even the kind of the pinnacle app for media library access and playback and that sort of thing. So Infuse is an app, it's an app platform essentially, and it's available all across the Apple ecosystem. Behind me here, I'm running it on my Apple TV 4K on my 83 inch LG G2. They have the Infuse app available for uh, right in the Mac app store for all of the Mac computers. There's an iPhone app, there's an iPad app, and assuming you're using iCloud and syncing your app settings, you can maintain basically one set of information, one library, metadata, all of that stuff um, across all of your devices synced beautifully within the Apple ecosystem. So Infuse is the kind of app that you would use to play back ripped content. So if you have physical media, DVDs, Blu-rays, 4K Blu-rays, and you're, you're ripping content to MKVs or other types of files, you would set it up on a local server or NAS or even a cloud system. They actually provide cloud server access as well. Point Infuse essentially to where those media files and those assets live, and it will present to you the ability to uh, pull metadata, display metadata, movie posters, information, all of that sort of thing, navigate your library, and play your content. One really important element that I want to point out about Infuse as well is where Plex kind of or Plex generally requires a server to be ran. And in some cases you can run a server and a client on the same machine. I believe like an Nvidia Shield Pro would allow you to do that. Infuse is, is serverless essentially. The client stores the clients store the information, they share it with each other basically through iCloud. But there's no such thing specifically as an Infuse server. You point Infuse to where your files live, it indexes them and keeps the information and the metadata internal to itself, which is kind of nice in my opinion. There's basically less to maintain, less to manage. I rip my disks, I throw my content on my Synology NAS, organized in some folders and structures that I prefer, and everything just integrates. So let's take a look at, at what my collection looks like in Infuse, some of the basic setup, um, interface controls and options and features. Okay, so here we are looking at the main Apple TV 4K UI. I've got Infuse on the home row. One thing to point off right off the bat, unfortunately, it doesn't have home row integration for the Apple TV, which is kind of one of the neatest features of putting your apps on the top row. Hopefully, maybe someday they'll add that, whatnot. But in any case, if I launch Infuse, we can see here this very Apple TV-esque app UI. There's a lot of customization built into this. I don't want to overload this video with that. Again, I want to kind of keep it more, a little more introductory, but suffice to say, I've selected a few things for my main, my, my home interface when I launched the Infuse app. You can add favorites. I can get quick access to my entire movie collection. Custom playlists and collections are available. So you can also pin things, pin elements from your library. In this case, I pin movie genres, these top rated movies, and some other things to my home screen. So on the top, here are, are some controls. I can search my library for content. Here's where I can get into the home screen information, change the pinned items, add, remove things, and reorder them. There's this uh, refresh, which will force Infuse to take a look at my server, take a look at the sources of all the content, and update it if it finds anything new. And then, of course, we have settings. I'm not going to dive through each one of these one by one in this video, but suffice to say, you can add your shares. Basically, where do you want to get content from? You actually can use Infuse with the Plex server or MB servers or other servers. In this case, I've added specifically my NAS with regular kind of file sharing. There's my DS1821. And on the NAS, I pointed to, I favorited basically a couple of specific folders. What you add in terms of shares basically gives you the ability to build uh, into your library. So in this case, this is where I would be able to, to rescan, refresh metadata, 
enable and disable shares. And you can see there's some library accounts there. I'm currently knocking on the door of having close to 400 movies available on my server. iCloud Sync, that's what gives Infuse the ability to be used in one specific, uh, on one device, make changes, change the library, change metadata, all that stuff, and have those changes propagate. A lot of the general settings have to do with general like library presentation, light mode, dark mode, how titles and names are presented, sort ordering, and all of those types of options are available in here, along with a couple of different higher level uh, interface changes for how the movie details pages look. You do have the ability to dump your metadata. I can see Infuse right now is using close to 500 megabytes. Really hoping for a 256 gig Apple TV model to come this year, we'll see. Um, Infuse has some default and automatic collection management, putting movies and shows and, and such into collections. You can also do your own. I don't tend to use Infuse, Infuse collection management much, management much. I actually tend to use what they call playlists. There's also some options for playback, including how subtitles are used. Do you want continuous playback, uh, language selections, and then some parental restrictions that you can also enable. This app is under I would say heavy and regular development. It is updated regularly. Uh, bugs are fixed in a timely manner and features are also added. If we look through a library here, in this case, you can see the, the top level library is presented as playlist collections, movie shows, and others. I'm gonna go ahead and go into movies and Infuse basically scrubs your collection and provides all of these different ways to kind of cut down and look at your content. If I go to by resolution, I can see my 4K, full HD, which is 1080p, HD, which is less than 1080p. I can go in by release date for different decades if I wanna see my movies from the 2010s. I think really accessible, automatic, and well-managed uh, ways to cut into, your, cut into your collection and view your library as well as recently added unwatched and, and all that. If I go into all movies, I can see we do have this, this grid view here. There's not really specifically a way to resize, but you can take off the, the movie titles in the years under, which would, would squeeze everything up a little bit more. You can see the, the orange kind of marker in the upper right hand corner. That's an unwatched marker. Movies that you haven't marked as watched will have the corner marker, in this case, Abominable, uh, we did watch and it doesn't have a mark on its poster. If I go into a specific movie, I get this really nice view. It's using uh, the movie database, TMDB, to pull covers and, and all of that, as well as the backdrops. I see a nice here movie summary page where I have some options of things I can do. Change playlist, I can rate it within my own collection, manage watched, unwatched and edit metadata. On the right hand side there, I see some details. It's pulling, of course, a movie synopsis and it's giving me details also about the movie um, as it's reading the file. Some of the data coming from online, of course, some coming from the file. So I see ratings, I see runtime, I see year rating, the 4K HDR and the True HD 7.1 flags all come from Infuse parsing the file and presenting the information. If I scroll down, I get uh, some cast and crew and I can click into any of these. And if I have more content from my library that involves that, that actor, then I would see those in that list. And then from however I entered a specific movie details page, I do have the ability at the bottom, it'll allow me to access that list. So if I came in from a playlist, the other movies in the playlist would be here. In this case, I came from all movies and it's actually, notice it actually changed over so as I moved over to select Avengers, the one I have down here allows me to kind of jump around the list uh, and refresh the actual movie details. So if I go back to Abominable, there is fairly limited metadata management. What I can do though, is if Infuse improperly matched a movie to its proper proper movie release, I can, I can fix that here. So if I notice that I added something in my server, it got picked up the wrong way, I can come in, uh, search for specifically a movie entry, from TMDB and I can force it to, to reselect something else. This happens pretty rarely, but if you do good naming according to the titling of TMDB, put the years in, in your file names, then you're generally pretty well set. Notice down at the bottom, on the bottom left and the bottom right, there's a little more information. It's actually showing me the file name from my server. It doesn't show the path, but at least the file name so I can know if something is ever wrong. 
The player is quite nice. If I go ahead and play this, I do have my Apple TV set to match frame rate and uh, match dynamic range. So I'm gonna skip ahead. With the Apple TV remote in my hand, I can do the 10 second skips, I can pause, I can do all of those things. I get the indicator on the bottom. If I tap it, I get the thumbnails that pop up. I can swipe and it'll try its best to keep up with me getting the thumbnails from the file, you know, dynamically from the server. So I can jump ahead. So it shows me where I'm currently at in the movie and the time remaining from that point. If I swipe down, I get kind of the older style. They haven't adopted the newer style Apple TV playback menus yet, but I get my info there, metadata about what I'm watching. I get some video details and some options that I can change. Zoom modes, aspect ratio, audio selection. So if I have multiple tracks in my file, I could select them here as well as some playback options kind of from the Apple TV core player itself and then subtitle selections. You can get subtitles online which is pretty neat if you wanted them. I only tend to rip four subs and I do set up Infuse to play four subs automatically if four subs are in my file. Works great. Very impressed with the app overall. Looks great, plays great. It's fast, it's zippy. Nice little fade out there when I'm, I'm stopping playback. Notice how much of the bar is filled in on the play. Give me kind of an indication of where I left off. And if I come back to play something, that I already started, I get kind of the usual Apple TV response to choose to resume playing or pop back to the beginning. If we go back to the home screen, again, lots of control, looks great, controls great with Apple TV. Really this app is, it's, it's only Apple supported, built for the Apple ecosystem. I think they do a lot of nice library presentation stuff. Notice here, these are playlists that I made. This is all customized, so I created these playlists Notice how Infuse is kind of presenting them to me with, with pictures of a backdrop or some imagery from one of the movies that's in that playlist. If I jump across, let's go to the Marvel Universe. So the nice thing about playlists is you can add movies to them however you want. You can add movies to multiple playlists and you can create your own sword order. So I have the Marvel Universe here, the entire set of films. I've got them basically set up in, in release order. Um, so if I wanted to sit down and watch, uh, who knows what, 30 hours of Marvel content, start to finish, I could do that. I've watched a whole lot more movies than the interface is suggesting. If I go into a piece of content from the playlist, I get kicked into its movie details page. Again, all the same. And like I mentioned, now at the bottom is not the all movies list, it's the playlist list. So it keeps your context, it keeps your, keeps your place. And if we go ahead and click on Robert Downey Jr., there's an example of all of the movies that I have on my server that he was in. Same thing if I go into Endgame, notice now my list dynamically changed to be the Robert Downer, Robert Downey Jr. list as well. I think this is a pretty neat feature as well. I'll just call this one out really quick. Top rated movies, what it does is it basically gives you the best, uh, the list of the best 30 movies <laughs> that are available on your server based on ratings. As I add movies to my server, I find I always find it interesting, just personally, to, to kind of check this list. What are the what are the generally regarded best movies that I have in my collection, and when does something get something gets knocked out as something quote unquote better actually gets added? Notice the wrapping. If I go to the bottom, press down, I go back up to the top. To get all of the capability, this is a paid app. There is a free version of Infuse that you can download, set up your movies in playback and do all sorts of things. But if you really want to do the most advanced stuff, advanced library collection management and advanced playback, you do have to pay. It's I think 99 cents a month if you pay monthly, 10 bucks for a year, or there's a lifetime available for about 90, 90 ish dollars. I, I, I have the lifetime. The other way that I tend to use this too, that I find is so nice is having the Mac app is when I rip something, I put it on my server, I add it to my library, I'll pop open Infuse on my Mac, I'll have it scan my library, I'll make sure the metadata is right, I'll add it to whatever requisite playlist I want it to be in. Do all that on my computer with a mouse trackpad, with a keyboard, easier to interface with than using an actual you know, home theater device remote. As Soon as that's done, boom, it's, it, it syncs the, the library changes to the cloud. The next time that I, I go to my theater space or I sit down in the living room, pull up my phone or iPad, and I access Infuse, couple of seconds, quick sync, 
and it's all up to date. You can do a, a plethora of more things. You can, you can download from your server to the app on your mobile devices to take content with you. The, the one thing that I will point out is kind of the biggest deficiency related to Infuse, and this is more related to Apple TV, unfortunately, I think, than it is specifically this app, is if you are running an Apple TV with Infuse in an Atmos uh, immersive audio type system, I have in my theater a 7.2.4 environment, it doesn't bitstream its audio. So you can't get the original Dolby Atmos or DTSX audio from your content to your processor. That's an Apple TV limitation. They've never seen fit to let apps be able to bitstream. Now keep in mind, you do get lossless audio out of your content, but what it does is it decodes the Atmos, it decodes the DTSX and all of that to multi-channel PCM. That's a lossless decoding on the Apple TV and the Infuse app itself, so you're not losing the overall quality of the audio, but you're losing the immersive uh, metadata and the ability to light up those lights on your processor. So when I use it like this on my processor, I use the Dolby Surround Up Mixer mode on the incoming PCM soundtrack. Sounds great. I use the surround mixer on everything that I watch in the theater anyway. So regardless if the original source content is, is sub Atmos, I'm, I'm using that using that up mixer. Hopefully someday, sometime, Apple give apps the ability to bitstream, you know, full all codec audio. That would be awesome. I have full faith and expectation that if Apple ever released this limitation, this app would be supporting it like the next day. These folks are on it. It's been talked about on their forums and feedback. So we'll see what happens with tvOS and the Apple TV in the future. But that's that's the one glaring hole that would be awesome to plug in kind of this whole setup. That's Infuse. Do you use this? Do you like it? What do you like? What don't you like? I know I certainly have a variety of suggestions that I would like to see them do. And I'll, I'll make some more content about that. I want to deep dive on, on this kind of platform a little bit more overall with more kind of how-tos, improvement suggestions, and all of that. So let me know what you would like to see. Let me know what you would like to hear me say or talk about or show off if this is something that you might benefit from using, an alternative to Plex and Cody. Thanks so much for watching. Please do all the regular YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification. Look down in the description below for some ways to support the channel and come back for more home theater information and fun.